Hey everyone, in this video I'm sharing what it's like to travel from Toronto to Cancun along with some tips to help you navigate the airport and know what to expect if you're heading to Mexico in the near future. Hey everyone, I'm at Pearson International Airport and we are getting ready to board our flight to Cancun. I wanted to take you along and show you what it's like to travel and fly and I'll show you what it's like at the airport here in Toronto and Cancun. The first tip would be to double check your flight before heading to the airport to make sure it's on time and not cancelled. As you can see on these boards, there were quite a few delays. But as an early bird, I insisted we get to the airport with plenty of time to spare because you never know how long it's going to take to get through security and the new protocols. When we arrived, the terminal was pretty empty. We checked in at the kiosk and had a little help with our luggage tags. Then we went to the drop-off to drop off our bags at the touch-free Air Canada bag drop. And lucky for us, there was no line. So my second tip is to arrive early to give yourself extra time for check-in lines and lines for the baggage drop-off. With travel restrictions easing, crowds will likely be much larger and wait times longer during travel, especially if staff shortages persist due to the global situation. Tip number three would be to have all of your relevant documentation, proof of vaccination, and any insurance information ready for check-in, and triple check the requirements well in advance of your trip. Luckily for Mexico, we didn't need to meet any travel requirements other than proof of vaccine to fly from Canada. Because of the physical distancing, the lines going through security did take much longer than normal, since they tried to space people out. In Toronto, they had plastic walls up to separate passengers as they emptied all of their stuff into the bins. But at a certain point, there really wasn't any physical distancing happening as everyone crowded into the security area. So tip number four is to get your bags and pockets ready before going through security. Unlike my husband who always waits right until he gets to the bins and somehow always gets selected for the random bag checks, which also takes extra time. We didn't encounter many crowds as we walked through the terminal to our gate because we were so early, but there were large lines at both the Starbucks and Tim Hortons. And a good thing to know is that most shops and restaurants were open, however there are some restrictions on where you can eat in the terminal. Tip number 5 is to check the website to see what's open and hours of operation. But just note that on the website it does say that due to supply chain issues and shortages, not all menu items may be available, and stores may not fully be back to regular operations. Tip number six is that you can eat and drink at your gate. Like I said, there are designated areas to eat throughout the terminal, but you are also able to eat and drink at your gate. Some people had their mask off while they ate and drank, and some just lifted their mask in between sips. No one really enforced the mask wearing while people were eating or drinking. I drank my coffee at the gate, but I'd recommend eating in a designated spot to make it less restrictive. If you're wondering what seating is like at the gates, there is some physical distancing recommended with signs to keep every other seat free and some of the aisles were blocked off. However, when the gate seating area got full, there was still lots of crowding. There was also physical distancing signage on the floor for lining up to board the aircraft, but some things just never change. As soon as it was time, many passengers started to crowd the gate and didn't really regard the signage to keep distance. But if you're worried about physical distancing, perhaps flying is not for you at this time. The flight was absolutely packed with little to no empty seats. And while masks were mandatory on the plane, you still could lower it in between eating and drinking. We got the exit row somehow, and we have so much leg room here. You gotta take a look. We somehow got the exit row seats, which gave us a bit of extra room, and we loved it. My seventh tip, though, is to bring your own sanitizing wipes. We were given a little clean care kit with an extra mask, sanitizing wipes, and hand sanitizer but this was already after everyone had boarded. So by then, it was a little too late for cleaning your seat, your tray, and your seatbelt. 
This might not be the case for every flight, but we experienced this twice with Air Canada. In-flight services were reduced, but they did come around offering drink service and there were still opportunities to purchase food and alcoholic drinks. So tip number eight is to bring your own food and snacks if you're worried about a particular food restriction. You just don't know what will be available on the plane. Once we landed in Mexico, things were very different. Big crowds, crowding people trying to get you to buy tours and take shuttles or taxis. If you had an organized transfer to a resort like we did, that was also crowded and chaotic and most shuttles were completely full. But masks were still required in the airport and on the shuttle transfers. While we were there, negative PCR tests were still required to fly back to Canada. So tip number nine, regardless of if you're doing a PCR test, required until February 28th, or getting a rapid antigen test, February 28th and beyond, make sure you schedule this in advance at your resort or find a local lab that can take walk-ins nearby. Some telehealth options are also available that you can pre-book before you even leave. You definitely don't wanna forget this step. Once we made it to the airport, there were tons of signs about presenting your negative COVID results and your mandatory Mexican health questionnaire on their app. There is absolutely no social distancing happening right now. Everyone's crammed in like sardines trying to get through security. The crowds and lines were pretty bad and we weren't even traveling at a busy time. There were signs to maintain social distancing, but let's be honest, it didn't really happen throughout the security check. I hope my experience and these tips can be helpful if you're planning to fly soon from Pearson to Cancun or anywhere else. In general, flying felt pretty normal, it just took a little longer and not all of the amenities were available. I hope this video can be helpful if you're planning to fly in 2022 and if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more travel videos coming soon.